It's all set. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, December 18th meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, would the clerk help me with roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley. I'm here. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Oichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Nope. Mr. Omicki. No. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Silver. No. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Here. Thank you. So we have uh, eight commissioners here. Everybody is seated and participating. Uh, item number 2.1. Um, an application 2002-18-Z. Application 2.1, application number 202-18-Z. Tucker Lee, the applicant, uh, sent me an email requesting that this matter be further continued to your January 2nd meeting. That's the first meeting um, in, uh, in the new year. So um, probably before we leave tonight, we should discuss uh, everyone's availability so that we can, um, we can set that up. There were a uh, series of staff comments and some follow-up items from the last meeting that uh, they were not able to address in time. Very good. Do we actually need a motion to can? I, I would, we don't, right? Just would take it pro off. Probably just for the record so that the minutes are clear in future. So if somebody wants to um, uh, keep this um, hearing uh, continued to January 2nd, I think that would be in order. That would be in order. So moved. Ja so January, not 2nd, but the 18th? January 2nd. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said we were going to go. <clears throat> That's the first meeting in January. But okay. maybe before, as I said earlier, maybe before you go, you just make sure we've, we're going to have enough uh, folks yeah. at that meeting. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Rich? I'm staying. I second. Sorry. Thank no, you. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Let's move I on. Abstain. Thank you. Rich abstains. <laughs> Moving on to uh, new business. Uh, public hearing 3.1, application number 2005-18-Z, Maple Street 24 LLC, seeking a change of zone from Residence Z to Business Park for properties at 159 and 165 Middletown Avenue. Would the applicant join us at the microphone? And for the public's purposes, let me describe how a public hearing works. <clears throat> the applicant will describe what is being proposed to the commission. The commission will ask the applicant questions and at some point uh, we will turn around and open the floor to the public for public input into the, the process. We will then take the microphone back, so to speak, and, and, and continue the dialogue with the applicant. If we feel we have enough information, we will move to close the hearing and then deliberate on the application. Uh, if we if we don't, uh, you know, maybe we need to ex go beyond tonight to to have the applicant bring more information forth for us. Um, that's how the process works. Hopefully, that was clear enough. And so, with the applicant, introduce yourself and introduce your project. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is Frank Leone. I'm an attorney in East Hartford on Connecticut Boulevard with a law firm of Leone's Hotel and Nagel. And I'm appearing here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Maple Street 24 LLC. Uh, also with me tonight is. Are you speaking to yeah, pull, pull, pull the mic down. down. Try that. Try it again. Okay. Uh, is that better? <laughs> I apologize. Uh, again, my name is Frank Leone. I'm an attorney in East Harvard with the law firm of Leone Throw, Teller, and Nagel, and I'm appearing here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Maple Street 24 LLC. And I'm accompanied here tonight by Mr. Joseph Sulo who is the manager of that LLC. Uh, the member of the LLC is another entity of which he is also uh, a member. Also here tonight is Russell Heinz of the firm of Tarbell and Heinz, who is the land surveyor licensed with the state of Connecticut who has worked on this project. Mr. Sulo um, is also uh, a member of an entity known as Restaurant Supply LLC. He's been in the restaurant supply business for many years his, his location is on Murphy Road in Hartford, where he's been for some time. And at the current site at 24 Maple Street, he has opened up basically an internet sales uh, department. Um, and that's what's being operated out of that site in, in regard to his restaurant supply business. When he purchased the property in September of 2017, uh, the property, as is, is shown on this map, 
wraps around two residential lots, which are the subject of tonight's zone change application. And as you can see by looking at that drawing, um, and if I may, the westerly boundary line of those two lots was probably within 12 feet of that building. And the southerly portion of that building is about a 45,000 square foot warehouse. The previous, uh, previous occupant of the building used it for re refrigeration and storage and only needed to access it um, with, uh, uh, without forklifts. They could probably just use a, a, a little handcart to access it. But with my client's business, he needs to access it with forklifts. But there's a wall that separates that part of the building from the other part of the building. So that warehouse is kind of isolated. So my client put in two loading docks um, that you really can't access um, without going through those two residential lots that he purchased, one of which he purchased in September of 2017, about three weeks after the purchase of the main site, and the other one he purchased at the beginning of October. Um, also, it should be interesting to note that when he acquired the building, there was vegetation and trees that were growing up against the building that he had to access through those two lots to remortar and repoint that side of the building. So those two lots really become very important for his operation there to allow access to the two new loading docks so he can access the 45,000 square foot um, storage part of that warehouse part of that building. Uh, in addition, uh, he wants to make the building handicap accessible. Um, and so there will be a handicap ramp that, ramp that he wants to install, which is approximately here. And again, that ramp would encroach upon the residential property. So the purpose of tonight's zone change is to make those two lots which he acquired, the buildings have now been raised and no longer on the properties, to annex that property once the zone change is granted, if it is granted, so that he can then access those loading docks and put in the handicap ramp for handicap access. Now it should also be noted that as a result of doing that, the south southeast portion of those two lots, approximately 100 feet from the road, so we'd be talking about this area, um, is going to be green, um, and, and there are going to be, there's going to be a wall that is built along um, parallel to the building as it extends where those loading docks are. There will be a wall with arborvitae, and that wall will extend along the southerly boundary line and then again uh, along the uh, um, easterly boundary line of that remaining lot, that, not lot, that residence at 171 Middletown Avenue. So the, the property really will be improved uh, not only for use of by my client, but also for the neighborhood and for the aesthetics of the neighborhood. Uh, and think, we think that that is going to be um, very advantageous to everybody concerned. Um, now, when the commission considers um, this change, obviously uh, the, the commission has to determine how this fits in with the plan of development. Um, before I get to that, though, I do have maybe a little bit more graphic uh, evidence of what I'm talking about. Um, so I, I can pass this to the commission. I actually have two of this, this picture identifies the area where the handicap ramp would be. So that was in that corner I pointed out. So the handicap ramp coming off, the, the boundary line of, uh, I, I think it would be 159 Middletown Avenue um, would probably be up in, in this part of the picture. Sir, I can't see what you're... Oh, okay. Going. I'm trying to show everybody, so it's a little I different. Realize it's so a, probably be around this part it. of the picture. You're, you're addressing the commission primarily as well as the audience. I understand, sir. Okay. Um, just as a courtesy to the audience, since they couldn't hear me. I understand you. I'm, I'm trying to include them. I want you to include me. I yes, sir. Here. Yes, Thank sir. You. So I believe that property line would be about in this area. To, to again emphasize the point that the handicap ramp would encroach on that residential zone. This, this present photograph 
depicts the new loading docks uh, that were put in. And again, um, you can imagine that the residential zone is at the, the base of this picture. So really, this part of the building, the warehouse, becomes useless to my client if he can't access it through those loading docks, which means he would have to access it through the residential uh, parcels, and that's why we need that zone change. Now, what I find striking about this location is that the corner of Middletown Avenue and Maple Street is commercial zoned, business zoned. And yet, that zone with this property wraps around the subject properties of this application. So this configuration really, in my mind, is inconsistent with the plan of development. And changing the zone of those two lots to be consistent with the zone of the corner of Middletown Avenue and Maple Street is more in line with the plan of development. It's more orderly uh, than the way it appears now, especially when it makes the use of that corner piece from a business perspective much more practical. The activities that are going to be conducted on those two parcels after they are next to the property, if the commission deems it appropriate to grant the zone change, not going to be any different than the activities that are going on there now, really. Um, it's still going to be used as uh, an Internet sales distribution center, whether this zone change is granted or not. If the zone change is granted, it makes the operation much more practical and really safer for traffic within the property as far as employee parking is concerned and as far as trucks are concerned going in and out of the property. I would also point out that the access onto Middletown Avenue from the site, at the end of that access, there's a sign that prohibits trucks from making a right-hand turn down Middletown Avenue. So the traffic flow does not affect the, the other residences that are, are down the street, that are, on, that are to the south of the, of the site. Um, so I, I don't think that there is a, a danger um, from a safety standpoint um, to, the, to the residents on Middletown Avenue. Where, where's that sign you just spoke about, about not going down? It's, I would say... Uh, Somewhere in there. I remember seeing it. I was down there. But the the but driveway, the exit... Up. Is, is down around here. I drove through there today, okay. um, and there, there's a sign here. Where the outlet is now. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Right. Correct. Right. And, and there's a sign there with a picture of a truck with a circle and a line through it prohibiting a right-hand turn. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because there's no peculiar topography to the two lots in question, there's really um, not any unsuitability for the use of these two parcels as part of this project as well. Um, and as I look upon the, uh, the criteria that the Commission has to look at um, in Section 10.1, dash G, uh, or, or point G, uh, point eight, um, as I look at those, the proposed change is in accordance with the plan of conservation development. I think, again, to emphasize my point about the way that the commercial zone, the business zone, wraps around those two parcels, shows that it really is consistent uh, with the plan of development. Um, it's, it's certainly in conformity with the purpose of the regulations, which is control activity, uh, which we are doing to control the activity on this site and keeping it limited to the corner parcel. Um, and again, because the activities are not going to be any different than the activities that are taking place on the, on the parcel now, there's not going to be a, a negative impact upon public safety, welfare, or health, um, and, or for that matter, property values. If we want to talk about property values, the, the parcels, there's one, one remaining parcel um, is going to be abutting the business zone that doesn't abut it now. 179 Middletown Avenue 
always abutted it. So it's hard to imagine how it could have an adverse effect on property values. Given all that, um, I would respectfully submit that this is an application that is worthy of the approval of this commission, and, and I would submit it for your approval. Um, Mr. Heinz is here to answer any questions of anything that I haven't addressed, and obviously I'm more than willing to uh, address your questions if I'm able to. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, where have the two houses uh, been demolished? Which two sites? This house has been demolished, and that house has been demolished. Okay. 165 and 159 Middleton Avenue, the two sites that are the subject of tonight's application. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions of the applicant? Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, when you started, you uh, referenced that the properties were purchased in September and October. Were those both 17? Yes, all, all the purchases were in, in 2017. All right. And, and what you're representing tonight is the, is the desire to reconfigure four loading docks, um, access to that rear part of the warehouse. Correct. Right? Correct. Right. And the zone change necessary to, to make that work properly. That is absolutely correct, Mr. Chairman. Right. And, and, and obviously, I, I, I kind of over, maybe didn't spend enough time on it. Obviously, these two lots will then be combined into a legal description with the entire piece. So there will be one legal description for 24 Maple Street with the com combination of 165 and 159 Middletown Avenue. So it will become one, one legal parcel. parcel. Right. And how large is that parcel when you're done? Do you know offhand? Offhand, I don't know. Maybe Mr. Hines will. <clears throat> Approximately 5.5 acres in total. Thank you. All right, so for the record, there is a uh, piece of correspondence in the file from Peter to us uh, describing what's going on. And of course, uh, as, as you've heard the applicant reference, this uh, zone change has to be consistent with the uh, plan of conservation and development, and specifically section 10.1.G. And uh, he will, I'll ask Peter to read it and remind us exactly what we're supposed to be considering as we contemplate this. Okay, so section 10.1G, which is the section dealing with zone change applications, uh, within that section, it would be subsection eight, which reads as follows. Before the commission approves the zone change, it shall determine, and there are four things that you should determine. The proposed change is in accordance with the plan of conservation and development. I did provide uh, two copies that may or may not be circulating back and forth for the commission members. So uh, there are copies of the 2013 plan of conservation devel and development uh, in the record and available for your reference. Secondly, the proposed change is in conformance with the purposes of the regulations. So if you look at the purpose section of your zoning regulations, you will see the uh, various criteria there. Uh, the third criteria is the location of and activities permitted within the new zone will not adversely affect the public health, safety, welfare, or property values. And then lastly, the property is suitable for the intended use. So those are the four criteria. Thank you, Peter. Just one Ryan. quick question. The, the amount of property necessary to conduct the activities for the building, did you need more area than would have provided suitable lots on the other two properties? Like, is there a reason why the whole property needs to be converted as opposed to just taking what you need in order to access the loading docks in the back? I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Right well, I, I think I think in, I think in, in, in part the creation of the the green space that would be from Middletown Avenue 100 feet back is part of the project. So that that I think helps the property values for the neighboring properties as well because it won't be an eyesore. It's going to be green space and there's going to be arborvitae. You're going to have 
um, a natural shield um, after those arborvitae are planted. So um, I, I guess I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think that it would be um, consistent with the with the plan of development to only change the zone for half of it. Um. I'm just because because by can... changing the zone in its entirety and, and incorporating the entire parcels into 24 Maple Street, then that enables us to put the green space in, which I think is advantageous for the town. George? Yeah, along the same lines, uh, my colleague just asked. Um, what over. are your plans now? George? Bob, could you use the mic? I'm sorry. The manager has always told me <laughs> going into the mic. Um, yes, the um, he's gone. now why why can't uh, what, what he said? Why can't you have the lower halves on Middletown Ave of those lots? You're going to have them. In, what are you going to do with them? Tell me what you're going to do with those lots because you're just asking for a zone change. I'm curious what your plans are. Well, are they going to be parking lot? There's green going to be trees. Where are the green trees? The green, green lawn, the, the trees are going to be a hundred feet. If you drew a line a hundred feet from Middletown Avenue, parallel to Middletown Avenue, there's going to be a stone wall, and then on the other side of the stone wall is going to be arborvitae. That stone wall is also going to run along the the boundary line of um, what is now 165 Middletown Avenue and 171 Middletown Avenue, also at the rear of 171 Middletown Avenue, with the arborvitae plantings along that entire border. And then this will be impervious area, which will allow parking and also will allow access to the loading docks. So in other words, you're not really going to be putting parking on the front part of either of those two sites that you're asking for a change. That's correct. Thank you. All right. So, in it, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It is survey. Okay. So, just from the the new area, the two building lots, if you, if you will, is a more level pitch going up to that warehouse space than the northeast corner that park lot slopes down. Is that accurate? Yes. So. Yeah, so it slopes in, as I remember, into the, the current loading dock. So this actually makes a more level area back into that the new proposed bay, if you will. Well, part of, part of what we have to do for directly Russell Hunt's uh, surveyor uh, principal of surveying engineering for our building needs. Um, we have we have to put fill in to make this to fill the back portion here. I mean, there's quite a drop right. when this building when, when Joe bought these properties. This needed to be filled in. However, the whole front end here you know, is, is going to stay the same. Right. Like I said it's going to be green area. And to answer your question, why you couldn't really cut these in half, then they, it creates its own problem. It wouldn't be conforming, right? I would, but the the answer came, and yeah. when you guys mentioned the parking yeah, that you wanted to add, so part of the fact that when we do add the parking here, we're going to take out impervious area here, so it's going to end up not being a total wash, but we're going to have less, um, we don't have to do as much storm water management as it would be if we, if we left those buildings there. Other questions? <clears throat> Otherwise, I'll go to completing the file. There are uh, four pieces of uh, correspondence um, from the public, and I'm going to Massacre some of these names, but on December 14th, Christine Jacomi. I'm here, so I can present. Fine, terrific. And I hope I didn't mispronounce your name too badly. <laughs> uh, Demir and Daniela Akatovic, who uh, express opposition to the change. Um, such endeavors truly compromise the serenity and peace that they've grown to appreciate in old Weathersfield. Uh, there is a reference to a bar. We'll get to that in a moment. So that's uh, in opposition. Another letter dated December 13th from an Ann Fusco and Sharon LaPlante. Um, unable to attend, we strongly oppose the opening of a bar at the end of Middletown Avenue uh, in 
in this residential neighborhood. It's not a commercial neighborhood. There are children's family, children and families that walk in the area. Um, there's references to they have to go through a process to put up fe uh, fences and sheds, letters from the historical society. They're not, it seems like there, there's an impression that that hasn't all taken place and they oppose it. Uh, and on December 14th, a letter from Rick Weaver, wholeheartedly agree with the existing development plan. Uh, I believe the developer, historic commission in town have all acted responsibly. Bottom line, this is a, a good choice. All right, so three, four different pieces of correspondence to date on the project. Uh, are there other questions for the applicant or shall we open it up for public comment? We're all set. If Thank you, you would, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Allow public to come up. So, uh, no particular order, but you know, I don't know how many people are going to want to talk versus just listen. But show of hands, and then come on up, and uh, we'll we'll start a process. I, I will suggest that you know, just to save time, if one of you or a couple of you want to line up behind them, <clears throat> we'll keep the process moving. <clears throat> and uh, introduce yourself. Your address, and then... Hi, I'm Judy Tacey, 212 Middletown Avenue, and I promise I won't be as eloquent because I've never done any public speaking. This is my first, so please bear with me. And I'm going to read my comments because I'm probably not good at it. Okay. So I'm submitting a petition slash survey signed by over 100 residents of the Middletown Avenue neighborhood who oppose the demolition and or any zone change of these two properties from residential to a commercial business zone. We created this document as a means of surveying our neighborhood once we realized the full impact of the Historic District Commission's arbitrary decision to deem it appropriate allowing the demolition of these two houses on our street to become part of a parking lot slash landscape. While our neighbors indicated that they had seen work happening at the old Better Brand slash New Britain Candy Company warehouse on Maple Street, they were unaware of the behind the scenes sale of 159 and 165 Middletown Avenue to the developer. They were also unaware that the two houses had already been approved for demolition and that the only, only a building per permit was needed to proceed. Many of our neighbors shared unhappy experiences of their dealings with the Historic District Commission in order to make simple improvements to their homes. Many indicated that the requirements placed on them by the HTC would be more expensive, which often prevented doing the work they hoped to do. It was interesting that the only neighbors that did not want to sign our document said they were concerned that the town would use it against them if they made a future application. That's very sad. In the process of trying to get information for neighbors, I experienced town retribution firsthand when I received an email from the Historic District Commission liaison accusing us of a demolition on our property without a permit. Someone went through the effort to review old aerial views of Google Maps of only our property as evidence that unpermitted work was done and that they could help us with the application for demolition. This was apparently prompted by my personal involvement with organizing our neighborhood to oppose this application. Our neighbors also felt that the developer was receiving special consideration from the town since work appeared to continue despite a stop work order issued by the town. Numerous complaints were made to the building department and police department regarding activities on the properties. We also asked many questions about what was happening to these two properties and we were seeking an opportunity to express our opposition. Why would a developer invest over 400000 to tear down two houses prior to getting zoning approval. It gives the appearance of a done deal, a view expressed by many neighbors. The HDC meeting that granted permission to demolish was attended by only two residents of the neighborhood. While notification satisfied the legal requirements, there were only approximately seven residences that received notification, and three of these were unoccupied for various reasons. The remainder of the notices went to business entities like CLNP. The town should consider using current ways of communication, such as email blasts to interested parties who subscribe. A post of the town bulletin board, or a small ad in the rare reminder, just doesn't get the word out. The result was the HDC made a very uninformed, unprecedented decision without neighborhood input. The best we can do tonight at this meeting is give our input now. Despite the fact that the houses were demolished 
permanently altering our neighborhood. We oppose this application to change the zone from residential. There is no circumstance justifying the rezoning. There has been no change to the neighborhood justifying the rezoning, and there is no hardship. Our neighborhood has existed since 1955 with the distrib distribution warehouse on Maple Street. The homes were continuously occupied and well maintained up until the properties were purchased by the developer who let the properties go derelict. A zone change will create a dangerous precedent for the entire town. This is commercial creep solely for the sake of being able to comply with parking and drainage for more intensive use of the property. A zone change here is a textbook example of spot zoning. In closing, this corner of Middletown Avenue and Maple Street is one of the worst, most congested in Weathersfield. Adding any more intensive use is a huge public safety and potential health hazard. I speak for the signatures on the petition. We are the residents who live in this neighborhood and we are united against any zone change and urge you to do the right thing for our neighborhood. Please vote no to this application. And then I don't know who wants it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, my name is Barbara Crane. I'm the owner of 180 Middletown Avenue across the street from the uh, properties in question. I have lived there for the past 30 years. My parents are here with me. They also live there, and we actually used to live in 165 Middletown Avenue prior to moving to 180. Um, we are firmly opposed to the proposed zone change for several reasons. I believe several regulations in the Zoning Commission would be violated if this change were approved. Referring to paragraph 6.1, landscaping requirements, this section which is intended to establish the minimum standards for the preservation, installation, and maintenance of landscaping materials in order to, among other items, protect property values, provide privacy from view, light, glare, dirt, and noise, screen parking areas from view from roadways, buffer incompatible land uses, improve the environment, and enhance the appearance of properties in town. Um, we believe that there have already been some violations of these landscaping requirements uh, to, by 24 LLC since this has all started. Referring to Article 8.2, neighborhood compatibility, the design elements of the proposed development are not suitable in relation to the site characteristics, the style of the other buildings, and the otherwise residential immediate area. If approved, the probable future use of the property will alter future characteristics of the area and adversely affect property value in the neighborhood. Referring to Article 10.1, 10.1G8, which has already been mentioned, the location of and activities permitted within the zone, new zone uh, will definitely adversely affect the property value in our existing neighborhood. Also, depending on future use of, of, if the zone change is allowed, public health and safety may very well be adversely affected. While the applicant has provided drawings, et cetera, of the proposed site work, based on his previous track record, it appears he is unencumbered by regulations. He has trimmed lower branches from the pines that previously screened his existing paved parking area. Again, the required screening plantings, which now don't screen anything because all the lower branches have been taken down. He has proceeded with filling an area uh, to, that to date lies outside of the business park zone. I believe that's where the stop work order came into play after there were complaints made. Again, this is not permitted in the current residential zone. He has removed many mature trees that had been screening the bright lights on the warehouse. These lights now shine brightly into our windows all night long. He began demolition of the properties before obtaining the necessary permit. In conclusion, if approved, we believe the changes planned for the property may, may very well add property value, add to the grand list. Um, however, we believe that it would negatively impact the property values of the residential properties um, in the vicinity and on our street. Um, I realize Economic Development Commission may be in favor of this zone change, but we firmly believe that it would not be appropriate in our residential neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm, I'm Marco Rodriguez. Uh, we live on Lembo Drive. Um, we moved up uh, just over two years ago from Florida uh, to get a, a job, and 
Uh, we really love the town. Um, we love the small town feel. It's, it's, um, we didn't know places like this really existed that are just so family friendly. And um, I'm just going to let my wife say something because she's uh, urging to say something. <laughs> Amanda Rodriguez, 13 Lembo Drive. Uh, where is the applicant? You are the applicant? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, based on the behavior that we've seen from these testimonials, I don't think his behavior should be rewarded. He is not acting in a manner consistent with the laws and currently in place. So why would he respect the laws that you give him if you give him more room? Um, secondly... Uh, it, it's a bit of a joke to say that this is going to positively affect our neighborhood. You think I want drunkards walking around the streets with my children? Um, and um, I think there was one more thing, but I forget. So we very much oppose this change. Oh, other thing. We don't have to feel badly. Oh, no, what are they going to do if they can't get these loading ramps in? That's not our problem. They should have thought of that before they purchased the building. Good evening. <clears throat> so I have a prepared statement that I'll read, but I think it's important at this point that somebody brings up uh, um, the mention of the bar. It's been brought up once, I believe, by the chairman and hasn't really been mentioned by the representative for the uh, applicant. But um, in a meeting that uh, I attended where the applicant um, met with uh, myself and another person from the neighborhood. Your name? Just Brian to... Maliki, 222 okay. Middletown Avenue. Um, in that meeting, it was um, identified that the applicant proposes and is planning on putting a restaurant slash bar on the corner of the property, I believe, in this area over here, which that piece of the property is commercial, I guess that's within his rights to do so. But um, from what I understand, the reason, one of the reasons he needs to have these properties rezoned is because he needs to revert or divert the water floodplain or something along those lines to those two properties. I don't think it has as much to do with the loading docks as it, as it does to him wanting to put up this restaurant. So, right. so <clears throat> with that said, I will uh, just read from my statement. I oppose the application for a zone change to 159-165 Middletown Avenue. Changing the zoning would adversely affect the neighborhood. It will lower property values and increase traffic by 20% or more. Um, that's just a rough number based on the fact that he's claiming to have 140 parking spaces. I'm assuming the uh, restaurant will be open for approximately 10 hours a day. If he has a turnover every two hours, we're, we're thinking it's gonna be seven, 800 additional cars on the street. Um, this will create a dangerous environment for pedestrians, bicyclists, children's, uh, children and pets. A zone change to these properties will also set a dangerous precedence for other residential properties on the street that may go up for sale, leading to further diminishment of our property values. The houses that were on 159 and 165 Middletown Avenue are part of the historic district and were never intended to be commercial properties. This application is an example of spot zoning and should not be tolerated. Residents of this community rely on the good judgment of the zoning board to prevent these types of applications from being approved. I ask that the Planning and Zoning Committee members do the right thing and reject this application in whole. Thank you. So thank you. Let me, let me take a moment to, because that was the first time somebody took a, fair amount of time to address the bar. The bar is not on the agenda tonight. The bar, if they ever were to propose it, will come at some point down the road as part of another application. Yes, but the traffic, that's good. <coughs> so, so this is, a, this is a land use zoning, zoning change. We can all anticipate that something else will come before us but that will be a separate decision-making process. So we know some, you know, it's intuitive that something would be proposed. It may not be a bar at all by the time this comes forward. I don't know, but we've all heard that story, so I don't want to downplay it. I just want to say that's not really going to be specifically germane to the topic tonight. It is a change in the zone, um, and and the building, the building can use some some depth to the property beside the structure itself, period. 
So again, I'm, we're going to we're going to try and separate the two issues as we deliberate. Okay. My name is Christine Brown. My address is 188 Middletown Avenue. I've been in my home for 19 years. I oppose the application for a zone change at 159 and 165 Middletown Avenue. My reason for opposing is because the properties at 159 and 165 Middletown Avenue reside in a neighborhood, our neighborhood. There is no valid reason for this change, especially since there are so many vacant commercial buildings on the Salestine Highway, which is only a short walk away from our neighborhood. This application is a great example of spot zoning. The definition for spot zoning, while zoning regulates the land use in whole districts, spot zoning makes unjustified exceptions for a parcel or parcels within a district. If this zone change happens in our neighborhood, which is in the historic district, it can happen in anyone's neighborhood. Residents depend on the protections that zoning affords. I sincerely ask the commission to please reject Mr. Sulo's application for a zone change in our neighborhood. Thank you. Just, we'll pass it down. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ronald Tacey. Uh, I'm here to speak against the proposed zone change. My wife Judy and I have lived at 212 Middletown Avenue for over 40 years. It's 40. We've lived in Wethersfield for over 45 years. When looking to buy an old home in old Wethersfield that we could afford and fix up, we were having no luck until we were shown a house built in the 1700s located on Middletown Avenue. We liked the fact that Middletown Avenue was in the historic district, a stable and protected neighborhood. You knew what you were getting. We've put a lifetime of sweat equity into restoring our, this home because we were confident that we would not be encroached on by commercial or business development. The Boucher family that lived in 165 Middletown Avenue, their son was the same age as our youngest son. We were surprised to find when we found out last fall that they had sold their home to the developer of the uh, to the developer of the old bread or brands warehouse on the corner. The Boussages indicated that they they had no plans to sell or move, but the developer made them an offer that they couldn't refuse. They also said the developer indicated he needed the two properties for parking. It all seemed very odd, but we weren't concerned because the Historic District Commission would never let those two houses get torn down. It was shortly after, still last fall, that we heard sounds of trees being cut down. We went to see what was going on. We saw that the rear yards of 159 and 165 Milton Avenue were being cleared, outbuildings and all. This prompted our first trip to the town hall to ask what was going on. When we asked at the building department if this was permitted work, it was suggested we go to the town planner's office. There we were given a copy of the stop work order, which I'm sure you're familiar with. We expressed our concern about what was happening with the two residential properties. We wanted an opportunity to be heard and asked, please put our name on all communications regarding meetings for these properties. We and our, na and our neighbors did not attend the HDC meeting last January because we didn't know about it. In the years since then, we have reported unpermitted work being done with little or no response from the town. Tonight we're expressing our views on the use of these properties for the first time, and the two homes are already demolished. Tearing down two homes and changing a residential zone to a more intense use is not your everyday HDC application. The town could have been more transparent in this process and should consider using email to subscribers and neighborhood groups for better communication. It is also unfortunate that the current process sends this application to HDC prior to TPZ. 
the HDC decision sealed the fate of these houses. Demolishing them prior to, to, the, to zoning approval seems a bit risky and certainly presumptive. Is it true that the town gave the developer a grant, grant money for the facade that it put up on Maple Street of the warehouse? We wrote a letter last summer asking town manager that question and many other questions about the properties. We never got an answer. We found that getting information from the town regarding these properties to be extremely difficult. There appears to be irregularities in the way the town has handled this property in the application and permit process. The mandate of the HDC from their own mission statement is to preserve and protect the many architectural phases of a Connecticut River community. Still from their statement, we believe that buildings from all time periods are an integral part of the architectural landscape of the district and are as worthy of preservation as historic structures. It appears at times that the responsibility line between HDC and TPZ is blurred, at least to me. In, in the HDC minutes discussing the appropriateness for an unprecedented demolition of two houses in the historic district, Commissioner Ovian stated that there are many examples of two homes there are many examples of the two homes that will be taken down here on Middletown Avenue in this part of the district. Really, how many homes of this type are in this district? How, are these homes in the top 10% or the bottom 10% of, of the homes of this style? How many of these homes are enough? What if my home, which was built in the 1700s, was on one of those residential lots? Do we have enough examples of this type of house? This rationality is totally arbitrary with no factual basis. Obviously, Middletown Avenue is held to a different standard than other parts of the historic district. Could this happen on the corner of Church in Maine? Didn't the HDC recently turn down an application on this corner because the proposed use would be too intense for the neighborhood? And parking was a major factor for that decision. The HDC approved the existing changes to the building on Maple Street. While it is an attractive design, maybe for the Silas Dean Highway, does it belong in an historic district? Where's the consistency? What's the message being sent? Mr. Ovian st also stated the feel of the neighborhood won't be diminished by removing of these two houses. In fact, it will. <laughs> it's okay. I, I needed to catch my breath. I think you like what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Ovian also stated that the feel of the neighborhood won't be diminished by the removal of these two homes. In fact, it will probably look less like an imposition on the neighborhood. Again, really? What a condescending statement. Our neighborhood has already been changed by the demolition of these two homes, and this is a precedent of great concern to us. Zoning change has been facilitated by the failure of the HDC to protect our neighborhood. <clears throat> it will ultimately lead to further commercial creep and lowering of our property values. Apparently, HDC feels that arborvitaes and a block wall will fix everything like they did on the corner of Spring Street and Maple Street. What happened to restore Store, repair, renovate, as opposed to demolition. Would you want to own the adjoining residential properties? We may as well tear them down too, put up a convenience store. Is Middletown Avenue for sale to the highest bidder? Is this the next Silas Dean Highway? Stovian further stated it looks like a block that was intended to be commercial at the junction, at, at that junction, as on the other corner, Spring Street. The house at 159 Milltown Avenue was built in 1954. The house at 165 was built in 1959. 
The next property at 171 was built in 1926. The original warehouse was also built in 1955. Probably be at this location because it facilitates, facilitated access to a rail siding. <coughs> Much like the old Weathersfield Iron Works located where procured and furniture is now. The Putnam Bridge to Glastonbury wasn't built until the late 1950s. So at this point in time, when the warehouse was built, Middletown Avenue was just the old road to Rocky Hill, and Maple Street was a road to nowhere. I don't know how we can speculate and assume that the intersection of Milltown Avenue and Maple Street was meant to be commercial, as opposed to it being residential. Also mentioned that this proposed zone change would square off the property and reduce massing. The zone change which will allow another building on the corner of Maple will dramatically increase massing and traffic. We're already dealing with one of the most congested stretches of Route 3 in town. How does this proposed zone change fit into the town's plan of conservation and development? Uh, page 96 says that it's the job of the TPZ to protect the residential character, to maintain residential density structure in existing neighborhoods. Zone change on these properties is the classic example of spot zoning. What is the precedent that will be established if this zone is changed? Weathersfield is desperate to extend its tax base and it appears that the preferred way is with commercial property rather than residential property. If a developer on the Silestine Highway needed more space for parking and their property was on the corner of one of the residential streets, could they simply buy the first two houses on the side street and tear them down? Or why wait for zoning approval? One rationalization for this zone change could be <coughs> for the greater good. Our neighbors have expressed their opposition by signing our document. We know that this application is just one of several leading up to a plan for much more intense ultimate objective. We feel that the proposed zone change would not be for the greater good of our neighborhood. We urge you as members of the Town Zoning Commission to reject this application and maintain the future integrity of our neighborhood. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gina Gadraj, and this is my sister Patricia Gadraj, and my mom Mona Gadraj, and we are here to oppose the zone change. This is going to be very short and sweet. My dad couldn't be here, so he just wrote that we vehemently oppose the insensitive decision by the Historic District Commission to permit the infiltration of our peaceful, pristine residential neighborhood by commercial interests. I have a 22-year-old special needs child. I take her for walks along Middletown Avenue, and I would hate to see that vehicles, trucks are going to be there going in and out when I have to take her for a walk. By demolishing two houses and building a parking lot, I am under the impression that we are going to have more trucks, more traffic around that area. It's definitely not going to be safe for my family and other families there to walk along that area and to feel that, okay, you're safe and you're, you're, you're protected and you could just go along for a walk. So that is just like one of the reasons why we are opposing this zoning change. Thank you very much. The address? 12 and 14 Allison Lane. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Thank you for allowing us, the residents of the neighborhood, to give our opinions and thoughts. My name is Christine Jackamy. Uh, my address is 417 Middletown Avenue. And um, as you had mentioned earlier, I did present a letter on Friday being uncertain that I was going to be able to attend today. 
but I will read my letter as I have written it. Um, so dear planning and zoning committee members, when I first heard of the proposed plans for the demolition of the two homes on Middletown Avenue for the construction of a burger restaurant and bar, I initially was not alarmed. I have been a lifelong resident of Middletown Avenue. And as any homeowner from this street knows, any home improvements must first be approved by the town's historic district commission. Speak with anyone who has gone through the process of obtaining approval for this, from this committee, and no doubt you will hear countless tales of how strict, limiting, and controlling this committee can be. Homeowners have been denied certain color choices, materials, and styles of construction, all for the supposed betterment of the community. As aggravating as the process is, if one keeps in mind that the committee's goal is to protect our neighborhood, then their decisions are better understood and accepted. So what has happened to the integrity of the historic district committee? What is now occurring, occurring on our street is major. This is not as minor as their nitpicking approval for shingle styles or paint colors. This is major. The historic district commission has allowed a developer to demolish two homes knowing that the plan is for the construction of a burger restaurant with a bar within a residential neighborhood, within a neighborhood whose best interest this committee has been protecting for generations, a burger restaurant and a bar in a residential neighborhood. To that committee's members, I say, shame on you. Were you not thinking? How can you justify this decision? Having such a business placed amongst homes certainly alters the aesthetics, comfort, value, and safety of the neighborhood, and I absolutely cannot understand why the Historic District Commission did not immediately reject this proposal at the onset. Their approval of this project shows clear disregard for their mission of maintaining what is for the good of the neighborhood. Tonight's meeting is to decide about zone changing, zoning changes to Middletown Avenue, from residential zoning to commercial. It had been my understanding that without this change, this burger, burger restaurant could not be built. If approved, what will come next? Will more homes come down to make way for yet another street in town like Silas Dean Highway or Berlin Turnpike? Does this burger place really need to be built amongst homes when there are a number of more suitable vacant buildings along the town's existing commercial roads? Why not renovate one of those more appropriate sites versus encroaching on a residential neighborhood? Planning and zoning can be members. Please think clearly before making your decision. Do you really honestly believe that approving this change would be the right thing to do? I believe this change will have a devastating effect on the town of Weathersfield. It will be the start of a slippery slope destruction of the beauty of our town. If it is allowed here today on Middletown Avenue, why not in your neighborhoods in town at some point in the future? The right thing to do is to deny this zoning change. I strongly vote no to the zoning change and strongly vote against this burger restaurant construction amongst our homes. Weathersfield is a beautiful town. Middletown Avenue was, was one of the first residential street one sees when coming into town from the highway. Don't destroy the image and value of our town by allowing this construction. Do the right thing. Vote no to the zoning change. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tom Pacheco, and I live 171 Middletown Avenue, right on the edge of that zoning. Um, basically, um, I've lived here since uh, 1964, and I've been here more than 55 years. My grandfather bought this place in 1960. Um, we've, um, you know, grew up here as, as kids. Um, and basically, I've seen this corner, the three and nine, change from being a little country corner to a monopoly, you know, a monopoly. Um, basically, I look on the corner of um, Spring Street there, and there's a four-story building standing on that corner, okay? That used to be like a, just a field. And I remember back when it was not better brands, but it was associated grocers, and um, basically, uh, you know, the train came through there, and the train used to deliver there, and I believe the train is coming through there now. Um, I, I, I don't know if, you know, in the plans that they have are w what's coming down the pike. Um, basically, what I see is, um, you know, this is, a, this is a great opportunity for this man, I, I believe, you know, to um, create new business, 
for the town. I, I see that. I you know, I have no problem with business. You know what I mean? I, I, I see that, you know, without the value producers and the value creators, we don't have no value at all. Okay. Um, but the thing is, basically, I see these properties as being um, in, a, in like a stalemate where um, our, properties have, our property values haven't increased since uh, probably 1989. Um, but if you look at the tax basis of, of these properties, um, we're paying double for what we've, we've, what we've, we've, we've we paid in 1989. Um, basically, um, you know, um, I, 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 I like, I've lived there um, through all kinds of, you know, hardships. Um, basically, one of the biggest problems um, in that area, okay, is the water problem. Okay, it's it's phenomenal water that comes through this area, and I've seen things in Connecticut. I mean, in Wethersfield, that where um, you know, I, I had an antique store on Main Street for a little bit, you know, just trying to start out as a business, and uh, the Standish House, you know, great, you know, business part um, profit for the town, but I've seen grant money go to you know. Big buildings like this, and and like four hundred thousand dollars to paint and and put new windows in this house, and I've I've I, you know like a few months later, contractor comes up, I'm, well the town comes up and says, well we need to put another hundred fifty thousand because the paint wasn't properly done on the south side of the building, and I'm like, and I see all this grant money going to different things, uh, Wilkie Farm. Okay, you know, the development of Wookiee Farm to be fixed, you know, for the town and stuff. Now it's Highland Street, um, and I, you know, I keep seeing grant money going all different places. And I'm going to tell you, when I grew up in this house, what I, what, we used to play, you know, in this yard. And in the wintertime or in the, in, at certain times, the water would flow through this property like you would not believe. Okay, and it's all, all three of these properties right here. Water would come down from here. And all down from the hot, from up on the highway, and come down and cut cut across up even over further, cut across and it would come through. It would come through here, 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 and even before when Associated Grocers it would come, the driveway used to come over here, and there was a pond over here, a little retention pond right here. Would flow out into the street. Um, basically, I've had M MDC knocking on my door in the middle of the winter, asking me you know, where's the water main break? And I'd take them out into the backyard and I would show them the ice flow coming down through the yards, okay? Basically, I would see, um, um, what do you call it? The, the, the whole, every, every one of these yards had ice dams going through their yard. At the street, that day, that afternoon, the payloader came up. It was breaking up the ice, and with a dump truck, they were hauling it away. It was all the way out to the middle of the street. Um, basically, when they put the sidewalks in, um, you know, my father was told he had a little drainage and a little, you know, pipe coming out the front of his property to go out into the street. He was told to shut that off. He, could, he had to remove that pipe, and, um, you know, your sump pump, our sump pump was hooked up to it. So basically the sump pump now flows out into the yard and it's a road in the yard. Um, I've seen many, you know, you know, um, instances where, you know, that water at certain, certain times when like we had the tornado that came through there, the water was, you know, almost up to your knees coming through our yard. This, and it's been coming through from the Silestine Highway and these buildings and the surfaces. Um, basically, um, if you look at um, the corner of Middletown Avenue and you look at three of the corners, all three corners are parking lots. Okay? Um, basically, like I said, when I grew up, there was like a beehive on the corner. There was um, an old house on between Spring Street and uh, Middletown Avenue that had an ar apple orchard. And that whole building where the Associated Grocers used to be was up on a hill. And not, as you look down, there was, a, there was an open field with a big weeping willow tree on the corner. And all these other, you know, things that have been, throughout the years have been just eliminated a little bit at a time. Um, now, 
Spring Street cuts over into the middle of that high, you know that area. Um, and basically, what you know, what I'm trying to say is is basically our town hasn't really come up, stepped up to the plate all these years. Okay, that we've had this water problem. I mean, I know people. Um, I'm uh, Mr. Bone. He's passed. Um, I know he used to complain about the water. Um, I've signed a thing one time when uh, Better Brands wanted to fix the back of the building there um, on their property where they they blocked the um, the the drainage ditch on on uh, the tracks to get to the other piece of property from the the, the parking lots above us. Um, basically, what I've seen is. Um, you know, um, all, all different um, aspects of, of our lives being changed throughout the years, but nobody's stepping up to address the water problem in that area. And there is a big water problem there. Um, and I, like I said, um, the grant money that comes to this town has never stepped up and said, hey, you know, what are we going to do here? You know, and, and I'm telling you, you could probably go back quite a ways and look at all the people on that whole west side of the road and see that they've signed papers stating that, you know, we need to do something about this water problem. Um, the other thing is, is basically um, at right now, all the people on the west side of the street, if you were to sit in your backyard and look across the tracks, basically you see the city knocking on its door, the buildings, the size of the buildings. Um, the parking lots, um, the water that comes off of that part of the, you know, Weathersfield is coming down through that whole area, and basically it's changing, you know, the demographics of our of our landscape. I mean, I've you know I've, I've seen my yard shift and change with the ice and the whatever, and and um, different, you know, the ponds and you know go and take out my garage. I can't. I, I got a garage. It's sinking into the ground. I mean, it's literally sinking into the ground. Um, basically, um, you know, I, I, I see a lot of different things that have been going on all these years, and they're just not, there hasn't been any really attention to Middletown Avenue and the residents of Middletown Avenue. Um, when I look at, um, what do you call it? Like the, somebody mentioned, the lights. Um, just recently, they put all these lights on the, the back of the building. Um, I look out my back door, and what I see is I see headlights shining in my eyes. You know, I, I, I you know. Okay, thank you. Um, bas basically, um, I don't have a real problem with um, the zoning change. Okay, I know I, I, I see business, you know, and I know people have to make money, make a living, and and then I, I respect people who protect value, the value of these people, the value of mine, the value of the value he's trying to create. Um, I see it all. Um, I have a few questions on the zoning change and some of the issues on the zoning change. Um, basically, um, the loading dock um, is, um, I, I don't understand the, um, the need for the uh, handicap ramp. It's questionable. I just you know I, I see truck drivers and stuff pull up there, and uh, if you jump out of a truck, you know you're not going to be using a, a, a load, you know, a ramp. <clears throat> um, I, I I just don't see enough information on what's going on here. I just you know I don't see other drawings. You know I I, I want to see more detail. You know, I, I, you know, I approve, you know, people being able to create value. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going against this man and his property, and I want to see him prosper, okay? Um, the only other thing that I, I, I like to see is basically, you know, him take care of the people in the neighborhood. And not only that, the town take care of the people in the neighborhood. Thank you. Because basically, our, our town, you know, we, we, we paid our dues. We pay our dues every month, every year, every week. And, you know, we need, we need to be paid back. 
we need to protect the value we create. Thank you. Tom, excuse me, I have a question for you. Huh? So you seem to know the history of that building pretty well. So it was uh, yeah. Associated Grocers, that was the original? Yeah, that was the original. Your test of my memory, that's good. It's, What's that? It's coming back to me, your test of my memory as well. Yes. So now, uh, it's, during Associated Grocers, just refresh this for me, because I, so it's clear in my head. Sure. And Better Brands, they were, uh, they ran night and day, and they took tractor trailers in at night on their loading dock, correct? Yeah, to a certain degree, yeah. Right. I, I, I can recall um, when um, Better Brands bought, um, they opened up that parking lot. They made, the, they took, they took the whole hillside and regraded the whole landscape right. there. Um, basically, my, a friend of mine, well, the neighbors, the first house, Jerry, the Florences were living there. Um, there was complaints about refrigerator trucks and... Right, because they would overnight with reefer truck, 50 yes, yes. on the road, tractor trailers, come yes. and unload, and right. they would almost a 24-hour day operation. At it some was, better time. brands. Yep. Came. And, and they would do rail siding? What's some, that? Associated would do rail siding. Associated sightings. did rail siding. Yes, they did. Um, basically, um, I can really recall the garage when I was a kid going up there, and um, there would be like maybe about seven or eight Mack trucks sticking out of the, the front of that building. Um, but they were more uh, up on top of the hill. Right. Um, they kind of like, I, remember, I recall back um, my parents going to a meeting back then yeah. when, uh, when Associated Grocers wanted to grow. Right. And they wanted all five properties. Yeah. They were offering to buy all five properties back in, uh, I would say, around 68, 69. Then you were speaking of the willow trees in the corner. Because those all went when they renovated that corner and put the uh, pine yes. trees in. That's yes. when they put the sidewalk yes, in there, there correct? Yes, there was, yeah. And they kind of widened that intersection? Yeah. That's not all came in there? Well, there was uh, medias inside. And there was a couple of medias um, in, in the intersection. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so they took them out. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And then, because I, I remember now, did that hill that they had there in that parking lot, they, I remember that used to get icy, and the trucks used to get stuck on that going in there. Yeah, that was a that was a regular incline, and it was just a, it was it was the driveway was moved, you know, what do you call it? Well, the driveway was kind of where it, it, the exit was right where it is, but basically, that whole hill they they, they knocked the whole hill down and took the whole grade and of what, that hill down. It escapes me. What was the gentleman's name who owned the abutting property one fifty nine? Who lived at that house? Do you remember? Florence. Yeah, right. Jerry, Jerry Florence. Because their whole their yard was basically was like a broke stockade fence and pine trees was right up against their yard, Better Brands yard. Yeah. It was right there. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember coming out of there because you could only go left and there was no room to put snow, so you yeah. had to go the other way. If you had a trailer to to go out of there. Yeah. 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 Like I said, we we played we played the whole. Like I said, that neighborhood was our our, our playground. Thank you very much for the information. I appreciate it. All right. It. Thank you. Hi, Antonella Desenzo, 211 Middletown Avenue. Um, I'm here for myself and my husband and my children. They can't be here. Um, we oppose the zone change. Um, since the historic district has let us down, I'm hoping that you can help us with this. I, I actually wrote a letter, but I'm gonna give you a little background. My husband and I are both from Hartford. We grew up in just a black top backyard. We found this house when we were pregnant with our first son. We bought it, it has a nice big backyard thinking we would stay here. It was a small house, we could add to it. We went to, through the historic society where we had to um, put an application in because we wanted to put a pool. We were told that our above ground pool was going to be an eyesore. It's an eyesore, but knocking down trees, building up that historic, this uh, building, that's not an eyesore, that doesn't belong in Old Weathersfield. That would never go through on Main Street. This building here that they redid looks beautiful, but it's not part of Old Weathersfield charm. My pool, my above ground pool for my kids so we can enjoy ourselves, have our family time, that's an eyesore. We were told we had to put up trees, we had to put up a fence, we had to put it behind the garage. I mean, they specifically told us where we had to put our pool. I couldn't put it anywhere in my backyard. It had to be behind my garage so you couldn't see it from the road because it's an eyesore. A year later, we go, we decide we're going to add to our house because now we have a daughter. So we have a son and daughter. We need two bedrooms. We go do this. In front of the board, I have to tell, they tell me, what kind of window panes, how many panes I can have in my window. 
They're so specific with everything that we're going to do. Meanwhile, they're giving these guys the approval to do whatever they want. This is, I understand that that corner is um, zoned for a uh, commercial business, but those two homes, they're residential. The rest of the yard, the rest of the street is all residential. The historic um, society, I don't know what, what policies, regulations they use. It's, they base it, is it just individually or do they do as all group? Because what this guy did and what we had to do were two separate things. We were told the pains had to be specific. We were told my pool was not going to be an eyesore. I don't get it. How come you were able to knock down trees, clear it all up? Yeah, I have to put up trees. My, last year, my house was hit by a car. The fence got knocked down. I had to immediately put up the trees to block it again because, God forbid, someone sees my above ground pool from the street. I don't get it. I just don't understand how it is that you're getting all these approvals so, so and I'm not getting anything. Please address us. How is it that he's getting all these approvals, but I'm not? I'm being told stipulations. Everything that I do, I have to have, there were stipulations. I sat there and listened to them call my pool an eyesore. It's an above ground pool for my family to use, and now it's an eyesore. I don't get it. He can, not, he can clear out trees, knock down houses, and we weren't informed of this. Why didn't I receive a letter when somebody's doing something over on Garden Street or on Main Street? I get a letter from the um, society telling me that this person's going to put up a window, this one's going to do this, this one's going to do that. I live on Middletown Avenue, and I didn't get anything. I don't get it. So I've, I've heard that. Right, you've heard it from everybody times. here. Have you spoken to the HDC? Because uh, I don't know. We, don't, we aren't the HDC, right? Right, so, I know you're not, but what I'm so, trying to say is. So I don't know how it happened so either. I'm, so I'm asking for you to help us because they haven't. They're, they're letting us down. So we're asking you guys, you guys to help us and block this now. We need you, we need your help to stop this because they're letting us down. They're doing nothing for us. I'm, let, I'm telling you that this is what's happened with me, what I've had to go through. Meanwhile, he's getting it all approved. I live in town. He doesn't. This is our neighborhood. We all live here. They don't. They're coming in and destroying our neighborhood, our residential neighborhood. That one corner is considered commercial. Not those two houses. Those are residential. He, he got to knock them down, and nobody was told anything. I, don't, I just don't understand. I grew up in Hartford with nothing. We had nothing for a backyard to have land. So when we bought this house, it was a beautiful acre. We bought it. We knew we could do more to it. We could add to the house. And I had to go in front of somebody else for a house that I'm paying for. It's my house. I have to get approval from them. He has to do the same thing, but his is all getting approved. And mine was approved with stipulations. And they kept coming to make sure that everything was done. Who's monitoring him? So that's what I'm asking. I'm asking you guys to help us keep our neighborhood res residential, family. It's what we need. We don't need another business. We don't need another bar if they do decide to put that in. I get it. That hasn't come up yet. But at some point, it will. At some point, it will. And we can't have that. We have enough businesses on the Solacine Highway. Would this go through in Old Weathersfield? Would this go in Main Street? Would this be approved there? That building that he affixed that looks so nice, zip along, does it belong there? Would that be okay in Old Weathersfield? On Main Street, on Garden Street, would it be approved? No. We all know that it wouldn't. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. That sign that he, um, Mr. Leon said that you know right turn. I was walking with the kids the other day, and a car actually came out. A, a truck came out. So it, it, they are taking right turns, and it actually happened when the street was blocked on a few Middletown Avenue was closed for like two years. They actually came down, they, had to, they went all the way down right, and they had to do a turn, they had to do a U turn to come back out. So they're not following that no right turn sign. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. So there he is tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. Good evening. My name is Bruce Crane. I live at 180 Middletown Avenue, uh, directly across the street from the houses that were demolished. As a matter of fact, I owned 165 back in the late 1960s. We lived there. I've lived on Middletown Avenue for the last 50 years. Uh, I feel that now that the two houses have been demolished, the neighborhood has already been negatively affected. Uh, I used to look across the street and see two well-kept houses. I now look across the street and see basically a mess that's going to be cleaned up, supposedly, 
and I see the warehouse where I used to see trees and it was screened. Also, um, as I think was pointed out earlier, the screening for the existing parking lot, which is required by zoning, this, that screening has been removed by, by virtue of the fact that the bottom 20 feet of all the, all of the limbs of the trees have been removed. Uh, obviously, I vehemently oppose this zone change. Um, if it approved, if approved, it opens it for future use, bars, restaurants, who knows what. Uh, and I know that those have not been proposed yet, so there's no speaking to it yet. But it opens it up for it as soon as the zone change is approved, so I oppose uh, that. And by the way, one thing I picked up, uh, this 45,000 square feet of that warehouse that wouldn't be usable if he can't get the zone change, why the hell did he buy the, air, the, buy the warehouse if he couldn't use that? Uh, my feeling is don't give him the zone change and let him figure out how to get his payloaders inside the building. He's done enough alterations to the outside of the building. I think he could make a little doorway for the payloaders to go through. Uh, okay, I think you got my message. Totally, please vote against this zone change. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners, members of the public. My name is Jennifer Thomason. I live at 53 North Brick Lane. I uh, grew up on Middletown Avenue, uh, the southern portion on the other side of Maple. And um, I am speaking in opposition of this zone change. Uh, the Middletown Avenue, as you hopefully are aware, leads into the historic district in Rocky Hill. That whole entire uh, section then um, the connection, the intersection there, if um, kept at the way it is now, is at least somewhat conducive to bicycling, which would connect Old Weathersfield, uh, the green area, and the other, I, I noticed there were other plans about, that pertain to bicycling and um, use of the space uh, for leisure. And... Uh, I oppose this this plan because that whole entire area has, over many years' time, seen more and more development and become more paved and industrial, and it really is damaging the character of Old Weathersfield and the historic district. Um, it, I feel that there's excessive commercialization of corners. Uh, just because a parcel abuts a commercial property doesn't mean that it should automatically just be considered for, you know, expansion uh, uh, and, and demolition just to allow for a commercial property to further encroach. Uh, I think that uh, your, your role as a commission is to listen to us as the community members, and you, you protect not only the interest of business owners, but also the ordinary tax-paying residents and families of this town, many of whom are here tonight. I urge you to reject this proposal and, um, and remember that you represent us. Thank you. Jim Woodworth, uh, <clears throat> 33 Mill Street. I don't live on Middletown Avenue. and. Thank God I can now drive on it. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I was, uh, last week was uh, uh, honored to be part of a, uh, the EDIC Salute to Business where awards were giving, given uh, to uh, a number of businesses that have improved things. I guess it's a vision award. One was to a, an apartment building on Ridge Road and one to Mr. Sulo for what he's done for the uh, warehouse and uh, interestingly enough the Ridge Road guy said oh we really have come a long ways we've got a great building we work with the neighbors and and I know there's a total amount of opposition to that obviously Mr. Sulo is just starting that uh, that now and maybe you know I, I, railroad metaphors are in these days 
it seems like the train has left the station um, in many ways on this project. Uh, I think it's really unfortunate that it's piecemeal so that uh, the houses, and personally, I'm among those people who thought, oh, the historic district will never let them take down those houses, but I was say wrong on that. But um, <clears throat> then there was work done which shouldn't have been done, commercial parking lot access in the residential zone and cease and desist or something like that, orders, stop work orders and stuff like that. And then, uh, so it seems to me that maybe just postpone the zone change until you got the site plan for the whole property because, uh, well, for example, those trees out there, they weren't just pruned up, they were butchered. Um, and uh, I, I, talking with Mr. Sulo, I understand what, you know, what he has in his mind um, for that corner with the restaurant and raising it up and putting it, you know, and, and then using that, those two residential properties as a place to handle that uh, stormwater runoff, um, which would, when it goes across the street, it goes into the Great Meadows Conservation Trust uh, property, which, by the way, I'm, we got an award for being a 50-year-old uh, organization, and I'm proud that, thank you, I'm proud that we bought that corner on the southeast corner of Middletown Avenue where, because 20 years ago, our members said, hey, they could put a gas station on that corner. We're going to stop that commercial development forever. And so this is preserved in perpetuity with an easement from the DEP on top of that. Um, so I'd, it never occurred to me that you could take a house down and, you know, add that kind of stuff. But um, so maybe, maybe the, I mean, obviously the houses are down. You're not going to put them back up. So <clears throat> maybe if, if the whole package of the site plan were in place and then we could see, okay, this is really going to be an asset to the neighborhood or the neighbors can see that it's going to be an asset to the neighborhood. Um, maybe that's the time to grant that zoning change and, and move forward on the whole thing. Um, but uh, as far as going to create an unsafe, dangerous environment on the street, well, that's already there. This is the bypass to the bypass to the bypass and the traffic's incredible, and I include myself, number one, is the person who bicycles every other day down there, and also the person who drives down there way too fast. And <clears throat> there should be right next, to, right, just to the right of that no right turn for the truck sign should be the first crosswalk that has one of those little signs and maybe a speed bump if everybody disregards it, <laughs> to say, okay, this, this is the highway over here and the commercial district, but now we're in the residential district. This is a residential street with families with little kids. Um, <clears throat> and then when you get to Allison Lane, there should be a stop sign and a double and a crosswalk. And all those pieces of 40-year-old uh, uh, sidewalk that never got connected, let's connect those things uh, and make this a residential street that is... Uh, uh, as the lady referred to the bicycle thing, make it a complete street and make it a demonstration of what you can do for complete streets in the town of Wethersfield. It does connect to historic districts. It is a tremendous funnel from uh, people coming down Mill Street from the other part of Wethersfield down into Old Wethersfield. There's all kinds of people who walk on Mill Street and there's, the sidewalk ends at the railroad. They have to walk in the street. This is the kind of situation that needs to be changed and you need to convince all of us that commercial creep is not going to happen just because you make this change and uh, that seems to me that's the most important thing anyway uh, do what you have to do and thank you for doing all that you do thanks Good evening. My name is Bob Woodward. I live at 456 Middletown Avenue, way on the south end of Middletown Avenue. I've lived, we've lived there for 40 years. I saw on the original agenda for Historic District Commission the request to demolish the two homes. 
and I never got to the meeting because MDC has had the south end of Middletown Avenue in turmoil, including the street blocked, and I no longer drive, or at least didn't drive by there for a long time, five times a week. I counted on Historic District Commission to leave those houses alone. We are a historic, we were the only street from Wethersfield to Rocky Hill. Silas Dean didn't exist, I'm told, at one point. We are a historic residential community. They allowed the houses to come down. I was driving up to the Yukon women's game on December 8th and saw the houses coming down and was stunned. It was just not a nice sight. Those of us in the entire neighborhood count on you to have the courage and the wisdom to stop this now, to leave us be a historic residential community. Please do so. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Teresa Mancini. I live at 174, um, right across the street from the two demolished homes. And um, I'm really opposed to this whole fiasco. Um, I grew up at 520, so I've lived on Middletown Avenue for, you know, since 1959. And I just would want to make one point. Where does this stop? If you allow two homes to be demolished, if Mr. Sulo wanted three homes or four homes, would you, would you give that to him? I mean, where's, his, where's the demarcation point? Can we expect this to happen again in five, 10 years if he wants it or somebody else comes in with, with a notion to put more properties, uh, more businesses in? Um, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, this is your legacy. You guys need to protect us, like everyone has been saying. You need to be proud at the end of the day, the decisions you make. They impact our generations for so many years to come. You, my, uh, this, the wood parcel, um, they have a new owner at that house, and he couldn't make it tonight, but he was telling me that um, he wanted to put a new door um, an oval glass door on the front door, and the Historic Commission denied it. And it, it just is, it's bizarre. It's just bizarre. Um, so I just really hope you think about it when you go to bed at night, and you probably don't have to worry about this in your neighborhoods. And we, we have no control. You have all the control. Thank you. My name is Barbara Rue. I live at 79 Main Street. I don't live on Middletown Avenue. But we've had these battles before. I was equally horrified that they tore those two houses down. If any of you remember the Comstock Ferry debacle where the historic district approved as a design a, what did we call it, a faux, a faux colonial strip mall, which was a disaster. But the good news there was the person who wanted to develop that forgot to get the demolition permit. So we won the appeal because you couldn't tear the barn down without a demolition permit. It sounds like this is exactly the reverse of that issue. This is a zoning issue because HTC did something that none of us can quite comprehend. Unfortunately, I think that um, the historic district somehow doesn't realize that Middletown Avenue is in the historical district, and that's a problem. So what I would say to those of you who live on Middletown Avenue, if this commission sees fit to do this spot zoning, find a good zoning lawyer and file an appeal because you probably could win it, though I'm not a zoning lawyer and I can't comment on that, but that does help. I would hope that this commission would listen to what has been said this evening because it sounds like there's sort of a half a project, and it's, we're not quite sure what it's going to include. But it's scary for the neighborhood, because all of a sudden, is another house going to be bought in another house? Because unlike sleepy Main Street, Middletown Avenue's a little bit busier. My daughter has always 
kidded me and said, you know, Mom, at 11 o'clock at night, you could go sit on the yellow line in Main Street, and you might meet the bus, but that would be about it. So I would hope that the residents are heard, and I think they're good grounds to deny this, this application at this juncture. It's always a good idea if you're developing a property, go talk to your neighbors because neighbors are important. Thank you. Barbara, Barbara, I'd like to ask you a question, sure. please. Yes, sir. You have had a lot of town experience, your family, and um, you're also a zoning attorney. Well, I'm not a zoning well, attorney. Well, I know what you are. <laughs> But, uh, I can read the book, but that's about it. Um, no, but you have a zoning experience. I've done. So I did. I worked on the Comstock Perry. Right. You have a lot of knowledge in that area. Do you feel that we should be not uh, just taking a zone change, but we ought to be having a plan and a zone change looked at at the same time? I would think that would be logical, because. It's not clear to me what the zone, what is anticipated for the zone change. And that's certainly the sense I have from the neighbors. They're frightened. If, if the person who owns the property is going to plant, put a tree farm in, for instance, that might be okay. Because that could be a commercial use. And it would be a very quiet neighbor. But it's not clear what they're planning on doing. And that scares the neighborhood. So I think that if there's a plan, people still may not like it, but they'll have something, they'll have some clarity. I don't think zone changes should be done just because. Without knowledge of, Without what's, knowledge going of what's going in. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Larry Brown. I live with my wife at uh, 188 Middletown Avenue. And uh, I thank you very much for the opportunity to, to address you. Um, I would have been up here earlier. I, I work in Stanford. I mean, it's worth the drive. We're very happy living here. Uh, but working in Stanford for almost 30 years, I've seen neighborhoods swallowed up by, by development. I've seen historic houses taken down. And I've heard lots of excuses for those actions. Um, Mr. Sulo is a successful businessman. He's very good at what he does, and I applaud him for that. I have total respect for that. He thinks big, um, and we have, my wife and I were, were two of the people that were at the uh, Historic District Committee meeting, uh, and I know you're not them, um, but that's when we first got our first view of what he has planned, and he showed up with incomplete plans. It looked pretty, but when you start asking questions about some things, um, more started to come to the surface. Now we've watched as the building's been refurbished um, and the whole southern end of it, which is now all bricked up, but please correct me if I'm wrong, but there's more bays that you, you have built into the building that you could open up. And one of the things I had brought up when I got the opportunity to speak to the uh, district uh, committee people was he had wanted to knock the houses down, and he had some ideas for it. And I said, well, what you really need is it's for a parking lot for your trucks to turn around. And he, Mr. Sula nodded his head, and that was honesty. And I, I respect that and applaud that. Um, we don't know what that building might be in 10 years. I would like to see business succeed. Businesses don't always succeed, and other businesses come in. I would not like to see five giant bay doors there with a, a FedEx. <coughs> These are things to consider. Um, complete plans, complete disclosure is what you folks would expect. And I hope down the road, as more things are considered, that is presented to you. Look, I come here standing with my neighbors, representing my neighborhood, but you're our neighbors too, okay? So please take that into consideration again. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. Is there anybody else wishing to speak for the moment? I had one question. Uh, 
I live on 191 Middletown Avenue next to uh, Dominic. He lives on near me, a couple houses away. The question I had was they were going to backfill and put the dirt in from the, from the building to the street. How much dirt are they going to put in there? And, and am I going to have ducks in my backyard or what? Because I already got a pond there now. So will that water come into my yard now? Because right now, as it is, Pat, who lives next door to me, between us, we have a river. And will that affect, will that affect my property? You know, if later year, you know, a couple of years down the road, I want to sell my property, and it's full of water. How do I sell it? I mean, as it is now, the sump pump goes 24/7. So if he puts dirt there, where he's saying the back of the building there, I don't know exactly where. I can see it. But if you level put dirt there, now there's going to be where a wall, so it doesn't come into my yard, or is it going to come into my yard? It's going to run off there and come into our yards. I mean, that's, you know, how much dirt is he putting in there? Ten feet deep coming off that building? I don't know. Thank you. And obviously, we, we can't answer the question, so we'll ask the question of the applicant. Okay. Could you give me your uh, name, please? Uh, Richie Longo. I live at 191 Middletown Avenue. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm supporting my neighbors. Thank you. Good evening, Anthony Gochi, 321 Middletown Avenue. What I don't understand is the handicap ramp going by a loading dock. Makes no sense. That has to be used for something else. I drive a 16 axle trailer truck hauling heavy equipment around. I could back into those loading docks with that trailer truck right now before the houses were torn down. What are they putting a handicap ramp there? They've, is there intentions to put something back there that people need to walk in? They said this is an internet business. People are ordering on the internet, they're loading it on a truck, they're sending it out. Okay? What is the, what's the ramp for? I don't get it. The other thing is I would recommend is that you people have a traffic counter placed on Middletown Avenue. The traffic on Middletown Avenue is horrendous. Whenever there's an accident on 91, Middletown Avenue is the main route that everybody uses to get down there and go through, okay? And now that it's reopened, believe me, I liked it better when it was closed. It was a nice, quiet roadway, except at the beginning when nobody would read the signs. Like they said, nobody reads signs. They would all go down. I and mean, one night it took me 35 minutes to get out of my driveway because of everybody coming down thinking they could shortcut through it. They had to turn around, okay? Uh, you have a lot of questions here, and this really should end up getting tabled so you can really dig into this, uh, in all honesty. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Elaine Coleman, and I don't live on Middletown Avenue, but the people in Middletown Avenue are my neighbors, in the historic district. I live it on Hartford Avenue. Middletown Avenue, unfortunately, has had to pay all the costs of being in the historic district. If you need to change anything on your house and go before the historic district commission, it costs you a lot of money. Not just for permits, not for applications, but for the professionals. You have to get in there to explain your project, really how it works. A do-it-yourselfer can can hardly go before the uh, Historic District Commission. I'm, I'm speaking here more as a, a person who has experienced this kind of thing in my life. I, uh, I grew up on Ridge Road, just north of Jordan Lane. We had, the wood, we had the Goodman Park across the street from us. We had the woods there. In the backyard, we had a beautiful little brook. We'd go skating. Behind the house, we had a wetlands where we went skating. And across Jordan Lane was enormous wetlands. Wouldn't you know, a developer named Howard Baldwin wanted to build a big apartment building on the cor on Celestine Highway and Jordan Line on, on the north side. Well, everybody says, oh, that's okay. It's on uh, Celestine Highway. Well, he tried to buy up all our houses. And when we saw his plan, we wanted to sell our houses, sit first six houses in, because we knew that it wasn't going to be the way it was anymore at all. One guy held out, so we're, we, we, we all got stuck there. Baldwin built his building. If anybody goes up to uh, the Berlin Turnpike 
on the corner of uh, Jordan Lane, and look and see that kind of horseshoe monster up there. It was ugly when it was built. Well, it can't keep paint on it for two years at a time. It's horrible. In the meantime, when they were developing, they filled in all the wetlands right up to our brook. And what's at wetlands? You know, there was at one time in the 50s when uh, wetlands weren't protected and uh, commercial went rampant again against wet wetlands. Um, now up there, it's been many years, but even when I was in my 20s, there's no brook there. You know what there is? There's a little trickle of water that's stopped by so much garbage and junk thrown in there and shopping carts. As soon as that apartment went in, on the other side of the road, the gigantic wetlands became the Stop and Shop shopping center. And they filled in all the wetlands. So it wasn't my little section of Ridge Road that got hurt by this sudden commercial creep. It went from Knott Street all the way to Hartford. And, and, and in my section where we lived, in those six houses, they were all rather big houses, and they had families, kids. All the kids all played together. It was a great neighborhood. Take a look at it now. When you drive from Jordan Lane into Hartford, it gets better when you get into Hartford. Much better. It's not a neighborhood anymore. The houses look like hell. Pretty soon somebody's going to say, that is a really lousy looking place. Let's just build out to, out to the park. You know? And, and uh, I always thought, living in Old Weathersfield, I think Weathersfield is a suburb. Old Weathersfield is a village. But an Old Weathersfield is very well protected by you and by the Historic District Commission. But Middletown Avenue is not treated as part of Old Weathersfield. Middletown Avenue is treated as Weathersfield's ugly stepchild. And, and you, know, you know, they pay all, they, they pay as if, and they get less. Um, the other question I have to ask is, I know that, that town planning and development has worked very hard economic development to get businesses in town. But I have to ask, why are, we, why are we knocking down two houses? It doesn't only affect those houses. It affects the houses next to them and the four houses across the street. And it puts a creep into the whole neighborhood. It's only a block, block and a half away, just like my house was, from the uh, Celestine. But I have to ask, if there are going to be businesses why the heck aren't they locating in all the locating in all those empty, ugly spots on the on the Celestine Highway? We can't fill the Celestine Highway, so we're going into neighborhoods. It doesn't sound right. I hope, I hope that you will reject it, and I also hope that this town will get back and do a full, a full residential, commercial business plan. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, guys, I spent all night trying to get the zoning regulations. It ain't easy to get it up the internet. And then I found I had loaded them down earlier sometime. I had my little notebook with my pictures. There you go. Is there anybody else who uh, wishes to speak at the moment? All righty. Would the applicant join us again at the mic? Do any of the uh, commission folks want to start? Uh, have any follow-up questions to the applicant? I'll start. I'll just ask one. Uh, just a little bit. This area is needed also for water the surface water control in the in the property or part of that plan? Well, the green space is, is part of that. that okay. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Okay. So uh, I was asking Peter some questions based on what I was hearing from uh, some of the public. Um, do we have or do we need a position from the HDC for this activity? And Peter's response was? They have already acted on the demolition of the homes, so 
if you needed further information on that, I, I think it's kind of after the fact. So they have. Do, um, do they need to take a position on a zone change no. within the HDC? No, it's not within their purview. No, thank you. Um, was there a facade grant given to this applicant? Yes, the, the Economic Development Commission. Uh, obviously, the front of the building was significantly uh, revised, uh, so those improvements were partially funded by the Economic Development Commission. Yeah. And we and we saw as a commission <clears throat> the proposal to to make those additions make those modifications to the structure at That's that correct. time, right? That's correct, yeah. And, and that work um, did not include the loading docks, et cetera, on the, on the back part of the property. No, just the just the facade improvements. Yeah. So are, should we have, should we be seeing a site plan I, I for think the work that was done and the modifications that would be required for the access? So the work that was done um, to the site, uh, there was some grading. There was mention of trees being removed. That, that work was um, halted by the town engineer. Uh, there was a reference to a cease and desist order. So there was a, a cease and desist order. Work was being done to, uh, in essence, uh, improve access to the back part of the building, um, which was uh, prohibited because the property was still residentially zoned. Um, and it required um, approval from various boards and commissions. So uh, when there was reference to the cease and desist order, it was very specific to that work. Okay. So clarify for me, if, if this was commercially zoned already, okay, that's a big, big if, but if they were doing modifications to the outside of the building, et cetera, would we not, and, and making changes to their driveway and, and handicap ramps, would we as a commission be seeing that plan for approval, or would that strictly be a town approval process, uh, town staff approval process? So um, the all of the exterior improvements to the building um, were approved by the Historic District Commission, in addition to the demolition of the homes. Um, there's a gray area in terms of whether that triggers planning and zoning commission approval. It could be construed as a minor improvement and subject to staff or review only. Mm -hmm. um, so I, th I think the zoning officer at that time may have made that interpretation. Um, whether it was the right interpretation, I guess, is subject to debate. Uh, however, in order to use those loading uh, docks, uh, a site plan would have to be approved by this commission to show you know, circulation access, whether it impacts the driveway, uh, paving, drainage, those kinds of things. So that uh, plan is, um, would ultimately come after this approval. Thank you. You so can't approve that plan until the zone change is in place. I see. All right, so thank you. That's where I was heading. Uh, when, when are we going to see what is proposed for the site with or without this bar issue? Um, we should be seeing something on this site based on what I'm hearing here tonight. Yes, yeah, it'll have to be reviewed by the town engineer, drainage, um, uh, buffer, um, which is something we would ultimately like to see, and there are requirements in your zoning regulations to protect the neighbors. We would look at the lighting and, and those kinds of things. All right, thank you. Specifically, Peter, uh, those particular plans for drainage and so forth, uh, is it one of the standards being that any activity on that property uh, you know, cannot uh, aggravate uh, or uh, you know, cause negative issues for adjoining property owners? So we would, uh, in, in light of that, we would want to see drainage calculations. We would want to see what the drainage watershed is, where the water uh, comes from now, and how it would be intercepted so that uh, we would make sure that those impacts uh, certainly don't uh, intensify and, and maybe are ultimately improved by what's proposed here. Would, right, which would like directly impact the usability of that, of the area that they need for their purpose. But does that, I don't know, I guess we could still make our decision pro or against and then that would happen and they would still not be able to do what they want to do. That's a, a potential scenario. So, um, I mean, most things can be engineered. 
um, you know, improvements can be made to address problems, but, but ultimately, um, yeah, it, it still has to be your approval. You may not grant that approval if you don't think it's, you know, in compliance with your requirements. So is it because this went to a different commission that the demo happens, like the cart went before the horse a little bit? That's the applicant's decision. Uh, he proceeds at his own risk to demolish houses. Um, um, Cause typically you would assume like, or any, any work on a property was, is done after we've seen. In, I would say in most cases, um, you know, the, the plans would be submitted and then the work would be done after that. But that's not our decision to make. It's the applicant's decision in terms of which steps he would follow. So follow up on you. could I follow up on him on this one? Uh, and my question before, and normally I've always advocated in my 40 years on this commission, particularly the last 10 or 20, that based upon experience, uh, it's always best if we know what's going to happen and that we ought to see zone change and a plan together before we go ahead. And I think it's coming to the fore in here tonight and based upon this, I would be really kind of concerned with approving this zone change without knowing what the details, further details are. And I was wondering, did you, as, did they come to you and ask, should we do a plan for approval in addition to this particular change to go with it? No, they, they viewed it as a chicken and egg that uh, they wanted the zone change and then they would come in a later on for the they site plan. That, that, that is their um, decision. I, I do have to say that um, there are obviously, uh, you know, cost implications for requiring, we've talked about this at previous meetings, um, you know, that, that but the, the applicant in this case decided to submit his zone change and um, come back uh, at a future time for the for the improvements that have been uh, referred to? Yes, uh, it costs developers a lot of money to develop. And, uh, but I feel there are certain procedures and ways that uh, enlighten us and make us uh, more aware of the total circumstance that we vote on. So that's the way I kind of feel about it. Yeah, just, just for the record, George, your regulations don't require that. Uh, no, I know they don't. I just want to advise you of, I, of, I'd of hope that. in the future you would advise people of that though, well, when they come in front George, of George, I really respect your point and I get what you're saying. Uh, this, this gentleman could come in, well, could come in and, with his proposal and execute that business. Someone else brought up, well, the business could fail. And then this site could go back to what it was, a 24-7, 365 rail side truck stop, loading, unloading, heavy logistics. FedEx, he hit it right on the nose as far as what it was. I'm not totally familiar with what's going on, but my gist of what I know so far, it seems like a far less intense use in the trucking terminal that it really was when it was associated, better brands, aero paper, and probably New Britain candy was probably the least. I mean, it was a truck terminal because I went in there and pulled enough trucks up the hill there in my time. And then, and, and uh, so that's just how I look at it, like what it could go back to be without any us being able to have any say about it that's the other side of it so he could come in and propose but that's you know if something happens that's just the way i look at it and i wasn't worried about knocking down the buildings because i can see there's definitely if you have the pro you want a little buffer around your property and you don't want to pay the taxes on these properties knock the buildings down it's just now they're now they're not even he could have them unzoned as building lots and their the revenue on it's nothing so he's better off having a buffer i'm just so i'm just kind of thinking this somebody out could in come side. in and build in accordance with the historic district standards uh new buildings there right yeah but i'm looking doing at the, that in all Weathersfield right now i'm really weighing out the past use on that property of the history that i i was familiar with there and i was glad the neighbor kind of refreshed my memory there so so well, what's before us tonight, however, is changing the, the use of two parcels that makes the property obviously larger and provides a, a zone change that provides the opportunity to go, you know, yes, it goes with this proposed internet 
trucking type operation, but there's no reason why in the future it couldn't go to a rail side facility with the high density or the high high traffic, except with a bigger parcel and therefore a bigger operation. So I, I don't know that your argument sways me that that we should be doing this without a plan. Well, so I'm, I'm sort of with George, right? I'm, I don't want to. I don't want to say that I'm not for it or uh, you know. Oh, no, I'm just kind of thinking it out. But I, I'd like more info. Yeah, but I was, I'm also just, and I'm not. I'm either with the more info, less info yet. Uh, and I'm also listening to what the neighbors are saying. Yeah, the people coming off that hill in a, in a railroad bed, they're going through with the intense water issue, and listening to what they say that regardless of what happens here. Because I remember that icy hill and the water that they had there. So if that makes that whole area better because they do have some type of system mm -hmm. with their landscaping and all that, then if it becomes landscaping or whatever it be with some uh, impervious surface or a wall and whatnot, I guess then it's rather than buildings and all that, it's, it's an engineered system is what I'm, what I'm getting at it at the end of the day that actually helps that whole runoff from... You know, because I'm sure he doesn't want the water splashing off his building either, so he wants to control it. All right. There's, there's opportunity is where you're right, going. Right. right. That's what I'm looking at. So, you know. But, but isn't that opportunity also, whether it's a residential lot or not, there is that opportunity. If, if the developer owns both of those parcels, he can do drainage improvements in that residential lot. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a business zone. But he can't use it to support the the building in the business zone on residential property. I so see. he can't improve I the see. back of that to support the commercial use. That's the real reason for the zone change. So, so and that's what I was understanding, like kind of improving that because I understand what listening to these people about the water and all this, and it, you don't need to be a hydrologist to figure this out that it's all coming downhill and there's wetlands across the street of how to best improve that area and I'm not going to say it but who knows maybe the neighbors will actually see the immediate neighbors might see some relief from this if there's a system in there and it gets a little bit straightened out which, which hasn't been addressed since probably 1955 you know, there's no one's done a major job in there so maybe a suggestion to move this along uh, there was a petition uh, filed um, with a whole bunch of papers, a whole bunch of signatures. There's a specific statute, uh, section 8-3, subsection B of the Connecticut General Statute, that basically states that if enough neighbors within a 500 foot distance have signed this petition, instead of a normal five vote uh, majority, it would be kicked up to a six vote uh, majority. So I would not advise you to even think about voting on this tonight. Um, so you would want to continue that this hearing so that I could examine this, see if it meets the test, and then let you know how many votes ultimately would be needed for this. That would allow this hearing to be open for however long, January 2nd. Uh, would, if the applicant um, ha used that time to at least provide you with a conceptual plan of what he ultimately, without going to the full engineering, would that satisfy uh, the concerns, George, that you have. It wouldn't be a full engineered plan, but it would be uh, a general idea of what they're going to do with this property. Right. It would help me greatly okay. because I might vote against this on the basis okay. of my complaint. Yeah, my thing is just like to have the implication how they're going to actually with the landscaping of these lots to address the concern of the neighbors that he's looking at a building and how it's going to help his property with the water situation, how it's critical to that and it becomes integral to his water management and those types of things. Yeah, I, I, I too am looking for the additional information and I appreciate it. I, I, I thought there was something that, that you had to do with the petition. Um, yeah, so more information. I don't think it takes an engineered solution to draw on where the landscape Con might concept, go, yeah. you know, besides yeah. where's the driveway yeah, going to go concept, and, yeah. sure, you know, but you can hit a lot of the zoning requirements without having to have it engineered. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I'm not, yeah we don't. Yeah, I don't, exactly. Doesn't need to go out and get the flow reading on that stuff. Right. Two. Good. One. One other question for Peter is that if 
if your recommendation is to hold this open so that you can deal with uh, whether that that constitutes an adequate protest petition could you also possibly ask the town attorney for an opinion on whether or not this is spot zoning sure i mean i have an opinion on that but yeah i do I too but I'll, to render one. exactly so um <laughs> Rich, my, my feeling is this is not spot zoning, so I'm, I'd like to have his opinion. Thank you. <laughs> you got to pay him. <laughs> so are there additional questions for the applicant, uh, additional things that we'd like them to offer perhaps when we come back? Because it sounds like we're going to probably all vote to continue the hearing. But are there things we would I'd like? I'd like to ask a quick question. Please. For the applicant, you know, for just because there's so many residents here, and I don't know how many will be back in January, you know, so I guess I have two questions. The first is how much, because you were going into a residential area, historic area, and you knew it was a historic uh, district, how much um, coordination, communication did you have with the, with the neighborhood? Candidly, I was not involved in okay. that process, so I can't address that personally. Um, because I thought someone said that they did have a meeting with you, so I was just wondering, was there coordination? No, at the, at the end, we showed them what we were doing. Okay, that's all it was. Okay. Um, the other question I have, the other question I have is, can you summarize again what benefit by by changing the these two lots to the business zone what benefit is that going to have for the community because we've talked about water we've talked about landscaping can you summarize again for all of us how that will benefit that community how your how your property will benefit that community i'll do my best good uh, the first thing i would say as i was listening to the residents speak um I, I'm not unsympathetic. My client's not unsympathetic to their fears and concerns. It's natural. Uh, and I don't know if there's anything that I could say or present that is going to take away those fears. I, I'm going to um, share something with everybody here tonight. My father was an attorney. And I remember one of the first things he told me was, Frank, you can't change the facts. Okay? So we can't change the fact that this corner property is already zoned business. All right, so the corner of Middletown Avenue and Maple Street is zoned business. We can't change that fact. So people's concerns about other use there, a restaurant, a restaurant slash bar, that's, that's a fact that exists irrespective of this zone change. So those are facts that none of us can change. As far as our use, again, I will repeat, the purpose of this zone change is so that the accessibility to our building is improved. And I don't believe that it's spot zoning. I think, in fact, to the contrary. I think it, more, it makes more sense that those two parcels are part of the corner business park. That is logical and makes sense to me. And as far as the concern that people had is, where, where is the line drawn? Well, the line is drawn by practicality. Okay, and the line is drawn by this commission. So if this zone change is granted, this commission is going to regulate what we put there. Uh, in, in all due respect, I did not laugh when anybody else spoke. I did not interrupt anybody else that spoke, and I would ask for the same courtesy, please. I'm doing my best to answer the question. So, so okay. Um, so, having said that. The improvement that we will need to do to the property is, in fact, for drainage. Okay, the, the removal of those houses is removing impervious structures, mm -hmm. which create drainage problems. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to include green space that should help not only our property, but surrounding properties. And I would also state that another fact that we all have to live with, including my client, we can't do anything to create a drainage problem for somebody else. So we can't develop this property in a way that it's going to create a drainage problem. And it sounds to me like there already is a drainage problem there. 
that is not our doing. And in fact, we'll be improving that situation with what we're doing to the property. Well, that's why you had to be stopped from regrading the property because it needs to be looked at first. So I think well, we understand that. Right. And so, we're, not, we're not disagreeing with that, right, sir. So those improvements need to be agreed upon. And I well, think that's, that's kind of what everybody's kind of hinging on. Is well, we I, see much. I, I guess that's where I would disagree to an extent. Granting this zone change is not going to take away your power to regulate that. You have the power to regulate that after you make this zone change. So I think requiring a plan before that is, in fact, putting the cart before the horse. We're telling you what our intention is. And if the zone change is granted and we move forward, we're going to have to present site plans. Thank you. So, uh, sure. I'd, I'd I'd hope it wouldn't be all fifty folks again. But yes, if there's a couple more people who want to reiterate questions, by all means, we'll, go ahead. We'll take a couple more. Can Can you? Wait. So wait, wait, wait. For, first of all, we would we would need you on the mic. All right. Um, are Are you done for the moment? Do you mind if? Yes, I'm so, done for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Come on back up. Just learning all about what's going on tonight myself, but I just would like a clear answer to the question on whether or not there will be an intention to build a bar or not uh, by the attorney. And um, just a, an on a, a clear yes or no question or answer to that question. So if, if at, at any point in the future. So that's all. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I don't have any problem with the building. Okay, um, there's a there's a few things like the lights. I sit in my backyard, and my light it, it looks like the moon's the moonlight's out. Or I walk out the door, and I, I'm like Bambi in a in the car lights. Um, you know, I, I would prefer a diverter for that. But as far as the water goes, okay, um, the water sometimes has been so drastic. I know that they want to put a retention, you want to put a retention pond in. Um, where's that retention pond going to drain into? And, you know, because basically um, a lot of that water, they used to have a retention pond right at the, at the, the, the bottom of the driveway on the right. And that water, after that thing would fill up, it would just flow back out onto the street. Um, you know, um, basically, I realized that, you know, this is a big project. And um, as far as my property and my neighbor's properties in the, in the area, um, there should be some kind of drainage system built into there, not only onto your property, but to address our properties, too. Okay, basically, um, the properties from three, four properties over flows all the way towards his property. Okay, so so I can answer that pretty definitively. He will not. He will not be required to fix your. He will not. He be will not be required to, to that, fix your drainage if, problem. Like I said, in essence, if you want to join in with the the neighborhood or so um, to address the whole problem and and, and the project. Um, as far as going after some grant money to fix the problem, I would be on board with it. Mr. Chairman, we're not discussing drainage here tonight. Right? Because basically, this, is, this has been a big issue. Like I said, when we were kids, we used to have races from our neighbor's yard down to the, what do you call it, with a stick, just to see whose stick would be to the drain. That's, the water would flow through there, you know, while we were waiting for the school bus. We'd sit there and watch this water flow through our yards. Um, so basically, like I said, if you're looking to, you know, to do what you're going to do, and if you know, and if they agree to what they're going to do, I would just, I would just like to have, you know, a little say and and a little help in the drainage problem there, and you know, work together on this drainage problem. 
you know, because like I said, uh, it is a very big problem. I mean, I've, I, you know, I've, I've listened to the sump pump every year for all my life. Yeah. Okay, so, so. Thank you. You know, so, thank you. So, all right. Is there any additional? Uh, let's, if it's if it's drainage, sir, I'd rather not. If it's drainage related, I'd rather not. Thank you. Is there is there somebody who wishes to speak? Uh, you know, and and would l suggest to us some additional information that we should be you know asking of the applicant. Um, So, I, I know, I, I need to get you to the mic. I'm sorry. You not only suffered the, the problem of being, having to pay, pay to be in a historic district, but not, not to have benef real benefits of it. And I, I shouldn't have to be here, right up here to say it. I'll say whoever you know in town, everybody in Old show, myself included, loved going down Middletown Avenue so we don't hit the highway and all the lights. You're right when they say that. And if there's any God in this town, somebody, will, somebody might put a no through a street sign up there on the, at Middletown Avenue in Maple. It has nothing to do with you. Forgive so, me. Um, would you re-identify yourself so that she can put that in the minutes? Um, at, uh, may, may, enter no, 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 name and address. Name and address. Your name and address. Yours. Elaine Coleman, 109 Hartford Avenue. Thank you. We, we create minutes. I, the, I used to live in Little Town, Chester. I did this a couple of times before I knew it. I was on a board. And then they didn't want to listen to me. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Seeing no additional hands up at the moment. I think we have a direction. Staff is going to work with the developer to come up with more information. There's going to be um, an effort to uh, characterize the petition as to whether it meets this threshold for us in the next step of this process. And so, you know, we're talking about continuing the hearing. Motion to continue, Mr. Chairman. Second. All right. Any discussion on that? Or everybody else all set? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. So the continuation in theory is to the 2nd of January. Should we take a, um, you can check with planning and zoning's office to confirm that it takes place on that date. It is a tough date, obviously. You can imagine it might well get extended to the, uh, what is it, it must be the 16th? 16th, all right. So tentatively the 2nd, but possibly the 16th. All righty. All right, that's it for the evening on that topic, ladies and gentlemen. So, so by the way, folks, before you leave, just so you know, it, 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 I, I just got clarification. The first is the Tuesday. That would be the normal day. It's the fifteenth. If it gets delayed from the second, it's the fifteenth. It's not. Are you with me? It, it, it's the fifteenth. We meet on Tuesdays. That's the first and the fifteenth. Agenda, if uh, folks could, if you want to take a f five minute? All right, we'll take a five minute break.
better than that. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, good. Sometimes I like to know. <laughs> We just wanted to give a few minutes. Now working. Sure. I know, well, we'll sure. when I use the gavel sure. the next time, it'll work. <laughs> no. We missed that. Yeah, I tried to get him to change it in this meeting, but I don't know. Someone told me that at this board of ed meeting, and has now just no. Just no, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Didn't you didn't go down there? No. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to go. I, but he got in here. More than that. Right. We'll be back in order. I thought I turned it off. Come on. But the mic is still on. Brass tacks here. We missed Jim. We missed Jim. I don't know how to turn off the, the mic. We so still on. Do you want to the turn it back on anyway? Yes. No. I know, that's why I clearly at. was incapable yeah. of doing it. I think he just. I tried. He was a little premature. <laughs> All right. The Russians can hear us anyway. So. We're back in order. Let's, um, the minute? let's move on to uh, other business. The minutes. Motion yeah. To approve. Could I have a couple little ones? All righty. One of them, I got a question how we handle it. Uh, on page three at the bottom, uh, it talks about the south, the west side, west porch level, and the uh, north side of the building. Well, those are wrong. Uh, they're otherwise, but if that's what the people said, I guess we have to keep them in there. Right? Is that the way you correct something like that? So, Paige, you were set to start. Page three. What? Later on, it's corrected. It's very so, clear what's so, going on. So whereabouts on page three? Yeah, the bottom there. So, so where it says there is an existing ramp, blah blah blah, and then West Porch. There is an existing the ramp. The steps. End of the sentence is north side of the building. They're both wrong. So you remember that discussion, yep. right? So yeah, they said them. Them. Well, they said them wrong. Okay. They said they said them wrong. So his question that's is more. Put down, but she's doing verbatim minutes, right? Yeah. So we, no, they, they should, should stay. They, no, they should be. They should be corrected because he's describing something that isn't accurate and. And and he did correct himself, right? Yeah, I think he did later on. So let's correct so, yeah, him in the first place. Yeah, it's all corrected throughout the rest of the minutes. Yep. Yeah. So, so let's so let's so correct him in the minutes. Side. Yep. All right. Um, so I'd say leave him. Right. No, we're going to change no, him. Correct. We're going to change him to the right oh, one. Okay. Yes. Good. All right. And then the last one would be on the south side. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yes. So let's let Peter 
you know, just check that yep. and, and work with Julie to, to fix it up. Yep. Right? Okay. Got it. Anything else, George? Yeah, there is one more. Gotta find. Oh, yeah. Page uh, 12. Uh, toward the bottom again, it's uh, where it says uh, a dot, and it says the page 9, paragraph 7, and it's con train dictate. Contradict. Date, Contradict. Right? Contraindicate. 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 <laughs> Contra train? That's correct, right? Contraindicate. Is it one word or two words? One word. One word. So that's correct. It is correct. Contrain? No, it's contraindicate. That is a word, huh? Contraindicate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. That's Sorry again. Drinking while you're taking <laughs> sleeping Whatever. pills. It's contraindicated. That's it. Otherwise, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve. Yes. Did they use it? Yes. I mean, don't do it. Somebody use that word? It's how about changing it? No. Recommended <laughs> <Tom Dean. laughs> right. I so, it. so we have some edit, right. so we have some edits, uh, and we have a motion to approve by Rich. Can I get a second? Second. Thanks, George. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Was anybody not here? I'm abstaining. Still got enough, right? Still six of us, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Thank you. Anything we have to do with this literature? So uh, you have some correspondence from Krog dated December 17th. They are looking for our um, appointment for the Regional Planning Commission. They've also attached a form they'd like us to fill out, and they also attached a list of meetings. It looks like they meet every other month kind of thing, January, March, May, September, and November. Um, we've had um, spotty attendance uh, to the Regional Planning Commission, so they are looking for somebody who would be willing to attend on a more uh, regular basis, representing, it's a Thursday, the third Thursday every other month, and it's in the evening in West Hartford. West Hartford downtown is a lovely place, so someone could look at this as an opportunity to visit West Hartford Center uh, every other Thursday, third Thursday. Um, if anyone has an interest, uh, they are looking for us to uh, make that appointment for the upcoming year. You, Jim, so, did Jim Hughes, did you say something? Uh, I think we should enclose a photo of the person with that. Is that pushing? I thought he was our spotty I, attendee. I thought he might have been. No, I'm the backup. He's oh. the bad guy, the spotty guy, right? The other guy over there. Yeah. Which one? With the better beard than I have. I got all untold. <laughs> and I said Thursdays were problematic. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was because it was sold as a. Uh, it was so, a. It was like a noon. I thought I got a town car to drive. There was like a noon time, <laughs> and then it ended up being like. All right, two of you. Could so um, I, I don't see any hands being raised. Perhaps we can think about it and get in touch hey, with Peter. I won't. Uh, I won't hold my breath waiting for that phone call. Well, and told somebody else besides Ryan. I, I, I literally can't make those. That's how oh, long is this long appointment? Well, no, I have a question. It's a, how long is this? It's a year, My usually. It's just nominate. a year. Yeah, we review it every year. A year or less in July. I nominate Yolanda. You, yeah, I second. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Okay. All those in favor? A good experience. Thank you. Hey, Yolanda, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. <coughs> thanks. Thanks for your okay. confidence. Tell them I'm actually a very nice person. Well, can you just send us notes? Say hello to Rob Aloise for us. Do you know Rob Aloise? I do. Yeah. Yeah. I think he runs the meetings. I think it's that West Hartford. That, that's what sold me. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. sold me. You like how I, fra I, I like how you sold painted it. that picture, West Hartford Center, on yeah. a Thursday take night? The take, yep. take the family. Yep. Hit the bar scene afterwards. Yeah, the meeting is at Bar Taco. <laughs> it's Thursday night. Dave was considering it. It was real expensive. Okay. What else? Uh, staff reports? So I, I, so we have the uh, potential two applications for that January 2nd meeting. How does that Same two. look for everybody's uh, availability? This is the, the Wednesday. It's the a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. Wednesday after New Year's. It is the day after New Year's. So. Exactly. I mean, I'm inclined. But since well, we had this one, I'm night. inclined. You're inclined? To... to Say thank you, but I'd like a break. Oh, you feeling a lot of stress? Yes. Uh, you know, pressure. I, you know, I, th I thought we shouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> Just wow, the voluntary. Will, yes, it will, is a voluntary. Will the right. other applicant 
the be ready? one benefit from that, an that, extra. I think uh, well, they would benefit probably for being on the January second. But we could we could also play it. I just have to do legal right. ads and things like that. So um, I can I can do those legal ads, and then we as we get approach the date like we did tonight, uh, get a head count when maybe people know more specifically what their plans are, and then just see how it. Uh, Goes. The only wrinkle is, you know, there were a lot of people here, and getting the word to them um, may be challenging. But, um, you know, as as I said, they can call the office, they can check the websites, that kind of thing. So, so how about we do that? I'll advertise it, assuming, and then we will. Uh, that gives us the option if we have enough people. Um, and obviously, if you're here tonight and the petition is valid and it kicks it up to six, it's extra important that. All of you attend, and That's maybe a one couple. That's reason why I was thinking okay. maybe it's probably not the best idea to right. try the second. Yeah. yeah, for them, but Belden may be okay. Right, right, right. 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 But then Tucker. And so, so let's do that, and and they can make that choice. Yes, right. they can oh, okay. choose to go one additional. Yep. 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 Okay. What is it? Twenty percent right. of the people. 20% more than 20% of the uh, within 500 feet the the it's the area it's the property not the within the 500 feet so right. I, it's not the whole property so I get a right it's not an easy no. validation to make it's 20% so. of the land mass within, within the 500 minute. feet really Say that again 20% of the people within what no 20% of the property within 500 feet within 500 right. but it's 20% yes. of the property that could be one property. owner. That could be one owner. Yeah, it could be the yeah. Conservation the Trust and 225 Spring Street. Right, yeah. exactly. Yep. Yeah. So, does that include DOT? It includes it, all land area. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, the state of Connecticut. Yeah, right? it does. It includes 24 Maple yeah. itself. Okay. All right. Uh, what else? Anything? That's it. All right. Give me a motion, Jim. Thank you. Yeah, let Jim do it. I'll Jim, second it. There you go. Got it. Jim Jim uh, made a motion to adjourn and Rich seconded it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> All this stuff's got to go. <laughs>